Learn about the strides female entrepreneurs of color are making. Be inspired by their story and enlightened by their leadership insight and advice. Welcome to She Leads Podcast, Season 4, Episode 6. I'm your host, Nicole Walker, a mother, businesswoman, and leader. Our guest for today is Deborah Walton. Deborah Walton is an author and confidence coach who serves as the CEO and founder at The Modern Lady, a lifestyle company that educates and empowers women to live their best lives. Walton and her team teaches women worldwide how to elevate their lives with elegance, helping them to unlock and unleash their feminine power through coaching, courses, and community. Walton knows the power of mindset, wardrobe, and charisma, and teaches timeless life principles for women to upgrade the essence of their chic selves to truly thrive. A Spelman College graduate with a bachelor's in psychology and a Washington University in St. Louis graduate with a master's degree in business administration, Walton is candid about sharing lessons learned from her corporate career at Google and IBM to inform and inspire her clients. A Southern Belle from Atlanta, Georgia, Walton currently resides in Dallas, Texas with her multiple daughter, Nyla. To learn more, please visit www.themodernlady.com. Without further ado, Leadership Empowerment with Deborah Walton. Devereaux, welcome to She Leads Podcast, Leadership Empowerment for Women of Color. We appreciate you blessing us with your insight today. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole. I'm delighted to be here. You're welcome. So I read your bio and I want to say kudos to you for choosing to educate and empower women to live their best lives. That's really awesome. Thank you so much. You know, there's definitely a need for it. I think so many of us can easily just get caught up in the minutia of life. You know, we have our careers, we have our families, we're running homes, but it's really important to have a, a sense of balance and really take a step back so that you can be intentional in creating the life that you want to live. So that's where I come in. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yes. And it is very much needed. So I do agree. Okay, so are you ready to talk about leadership? I am. Let's dive right in. <laughs> Let's dive right in. Okay, so I myself feel that every person is a leader in one shape or form, whether they realize it or not. Would you agree, Devra? Oh, absolutely. As women, we're definitely natural born leaders. We certainly have the capacity and, and the mental intellect to really be in front of a group and be in front of a room. You know, so many women, there are so, so many women that don't see themselves as leaders, but I definitely agree with you that we all are natural born leaders. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, I do agree that there is something within each person that we have to get up and do things for ourselves, even if we don't lead groups or large organizations or large teams. We have to start by leading ourselves. So we all are, in essence, leaders. Absolutely. And no matter the size of the group, sometimes I think that definitely can be a factor where, you know, women are intimidated by maybe large groups or large crowds. You can be a leader of a small group or just yourself, as you've stated. So we definitely all have the capacity to be natural born leaders. Okay. Thanks for that. So Devereaux, can you tell us when you realized you were a leader and what or who helped you come to this realization? Absolutely. So I would say it was really in middle school. I was involved in, in a group of friends that after an altercation, a disagreement occurred, I really found myself standing up for someone that was considered an underdog. And so I just really realized that, you know, all the, the character values and the morals that I grew up with at home 
that was certainly not something that everyone had access to or everyone was really um, being brought up the same way I was. And so I really found myself, that was a defining moment for me to really step into leadership and be a voice for someone that felt like they didn't have a voice. And of course that person did, but she just wasn't comfortable in in standing up for herself and, and sharing her perspective. And so I would say, you know, middle school was definitely a defining moment for me to start stepping into my leadership capabilities and capacity. And I really saw a great need to be the voice of reason and and really stand up for a situation where I saw that justice definitely had not been served. So that was a little bit frightening, you know? I mean, those times when you are stepping outside of your comfort zone, but the truth is, Nicole, anytime you're stepping outside of where you're comfortable, that's where all the magic happens. That's where the growth and the development really starts to take off. Okay. Yes, I do agree that stepping outside your comfort zone is needed for growth. That is a place that I have become accustomed to living in. So uh, I can relate 100%. I love how you said you decided to take on the role of standing up for the underdog. I can relate to that as well, as I also have decided to do that with my business initiatives, as I have often felt like the underdog in different situations and scenarios. So it is needed for someone to actually stand up for them. And that is definitely being a leader. So thanks for that. Absolutely. And it's like the old phrase, you just have to get comfortable being uncomfortable, you know? (laughs) Yes, But I can certainly relate as well, Nicole, because what I do is I really work with women that do feel less than. They feel like they're undeserving of success, happiness, love. And so just being able to really get in a room full of underdogs and show them there is another way. There's another option. (laughs) It's very inspiring. Yes, yes. Thank you. I'm glad you took that charge. That is awesome. Okay. So I believe all leaders experience failure. I myself, I don't like to consider them failures. I like to consider them lessons, take more of an optimistic view. But Devro, can you share your view on failure and what it means to you? Yes, I think failure is really just an opportunity, like you said, to learn a lesson. But the most important thing is that you're not just learning information, but you're able to apply it. And so A failure is really an opportunity to look at where you missed the mark and figure out how you can prevent that same situation from occurring in the future. So maybe it's, you know, trying a different tactic or doing something outside of the box, but there's always an opportunity whenever you really have an outcome that you were hoping that you wouldn't actually get, you can do something different for the next time going forward. And I think that's really the key. Instead of just learning the lesson, it's actually applying what you've learned so that you can experience a positive change in the future. Okay. Thanks for that. I love that, right? Take action. Don't just passively learn it, but are you acting upon what you learned? Are you implementing new steps and new procedures so that you won't go down the same road again? I love that extra step. The implementation is so crucial because honestly and truly in this this industry of, of professional development and personal development, the transformation only happens when you're taking action. So mm-hmm. without implementation, you will not see a change. Yes, yes, I agree. Thank you. Okay, so Devereaux, can you share one time you failed as a leader and tell us what you learned from that experience that helps you to become a better leader? Sure. So I would say, you know, I started my business really centered around inspiring women to enhance their style with a classic all-American look. And I really thought that the style piece was all that women needed in order to get to the next level. But what I found is that style is where most women want to start, but that's not where they need to finish. Mm. It really is about 
mindset. Mindset is the foundation of everything. And so I wouldn't necessarily call it a failure, but in my very first coaching program, I really missed the opportunity to fully serve women in areas that they were needing help in so that they could get to the next level in their life, whether it was starting to get out and date again, hoping to find you know the man of their dreams or looking to get the promotion or the raise or even just career switch. And so it was a great learning opportunity for me to look at how I could really start expanding my services based on the feedback I was getting from my customers. And my clients, you know, they were very candid in sharing with me, you know, additional ways I could further support them. And so that was a great opportunity that has really helped me to evolve my business and my services because now I'm able to really help women cover transforming every area of their lives rather than just their wardrobe. It's the ability to give their entire lives a makeover. And that only happened because I was receptive to making those changes after getting the feedback from some early clients very early on in my business. Okay. Thanks for that. And I do agree. You you touched on a key point. Feedback is so important. And to be a successful leader, it is imperative that we seek feedback and not only seek it, but actually use it to make the changes that's necessary for us to be successful and for us also to help the people that we intend to help the way that they actually need help. Because it's one thing for us to come up with an idea of what would be great for someone else. But unless you get the feedback from these people, how do you really know what they want or need or are looking for? So that's great. And I'm glad you actually implemented that and expanded yourself with that information. Yeah. And you know what's so interesting, Nicole, is that as a leader, it's not about you at all. You know, as a leader, you are there to serve. And so it's really about being open to listen to the needs of those that you're serving because that's the entire point of leadership is to be there serving for others. So when you take, you know, your personal agendas and your personal goals out of it and really focus on putting clients and others first, that really helps you to be much more impactful in your leadership as well. Okay, thanks for that. I'm just going to pull a quote that you said, as a leader, it's not about you at all. It's about serving. That's awesome. Okay. So do you servant think- leadership? <laughs> yes, I love it. I mean, when you said it, I'm like, yes, we're back to servant leadership. <laughs> I'm like that if I could preach it from the mountaintop, I would. Yes. Okay. So do you feel it's easier, harder, or requires the same effort? to be a female leader in the entrepreneur ecosystem and why? Oh my goodness. I could talk about this all day. (laughs) So being in the world of, you know, living life as a woman, we definitely, in my opinion, we certainly have a lot of advantages. However, systems are created for men. I mean, that's just the reality of the world that we live in. And so as a woman navigating through entrepreneurship or corporate America, it is more challenging. And there's just a couple of things that we have to do to pivot and and really shift not only our thoughts, but also our actions to really help level the playing field. Because quite honestly, I do think that as women, we are wired a certain way and we have to learn how to really navigate effectively in the world of business, whether it's corporate America or entrepreneurship, based on the rules and the structure of how business is typically done. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, keeping the emotions out of it, really focusing on, on the logic and the facts and being able to have a thick skin, not taking things too personally. You know, one piece of advice I always share with my clients is unless you are, you know, in a situation where there's a recent death or a very high emergency, uh, never cry at work. Never, never cry in front of, you know, a client or something unless it's relevant. Maybe someone just shared with you bad news. Then in that case, it's appropriate. But you certainly don't want to just, you know, start spilling the tears over something that's a personal situation that you're dealing with. So in so many ways, I think it's far more difficult 
to be a successful woman entrepreneur, but it's not impossible. And so it's just about us being able to really tweak and pivot where we need to so that we can create those advantages for ourselves. And there's so many wonderful books that can help us to do that. Lean in. Certainly, Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. There are so many books to really help us level the playing field, but we have to know going in that it's going to take a little bit extra effort and extra work compared to men because the system, it just, it wasn't created for us. Yes, thank you. I t- I agree a hundred percent with your viewpoint on this question, and it's funny I get all different kind of viewpoints. So, like you said, the system is the system. We have to we experience what we experience. It's the world that we live in, but we don't have to make it the end of the road, so to say. Right? We just have to pivot and make the changes that we need to make so that we are or we do place ourselves in the situations that we want ourselves to be in or present ourselves to be in the situations that we're looking for. And I agree it's about mindset too, as well as putting our best foot forward. So thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) All right. Productivity is a hot topic right now, as it should be. Many people want to know how to do more with less and be efficient. As a successful leader, this is a must. Devereaux, do you have any productivity tips to share with our listeners? Well, as type A as I am, I certainly love planning ahead and staying organized. I typically like to manage my calendar at least two to three months in advance for speaking engagements and any large-scale events so that I can make sure I can balance my time and how I'm spending the hours in the day, whether I'm working with clients or working to promote my business, bringing more clients in and really make sure that all the bases are covered. So planning ahead definitely helps me. And then one thing I do every evening is before I shut down, I look at my calendar for the next day. I make a little to-do list of things I'm going to take care of in the first half of the day. And that really helps me to just stay focused. I am the queen of lists. And it's so funny because the woman I am today is very much a grown-up version of, of me when I was younger. I would always make lists to go to the grocery store or what I wanted for my birthday. Even as, as a, a young girl, you know, I, I just love lists. It really helps to keep an organizational flow going. And so to-do lists every day definitely help me and um, just being able to be flexible when certain things have to get moved around because priorities shift. But I always have the idea in mind of what I'm hoping to accomplish. So that really helps me to get a lot done and be much more efficient and productive. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I love what you said. I love lists too. Lists make me happy. I'm like, (laughs) I make a list for almost everything. I encourage my family to make lists. My five-year-old son makes lists. (laughs) It's hilarious. So I definitely love lists and agree that they help you to be efficient and stay on target. And I like what you said, which is very important, I think, to productivity too, is being flexible because things do happen. And sometimes we have to change our direction. But if we are resistant to these sudden changes, it can stop us from being productive. So that was a key point as well. Thanks for that. Oh, absolutely. Lists make such a big difference. (laughs) They are definitely huge time savers. Yes, yes. I love them. Okay. So Devereaux, can you share an experience that blessed your leadership and tell us what the outcome or the takeaway was? Sure. I think that one thing that has been very, very helpful for me is having a mentor. And so probably two years ago, I started seeking out a mentor to find a woman that would really help me navigate where I was trying to go because she had already accomplished some of those things I was hoping to achieve. And so just spending time with her once a month over coffee, over lunch, keeping in touch, having that level of support and accountability was so instrumental and it really blessed me because so many of us have the goals and aspirations and dreams, but 
sometimes when you're very ambitious, like I am, (laughs) it can be hard to see those as tangible as something within reach. And so having a, a mentor really helped me to navigate that these things were, were real, they were possible. And it really helped me to find a game plan and create a way to make those goals and those dreams happen. So without a mentor, I, I probably wouldn't have recently announced my, my first book. It's something that is easy to talk about for so many years. Oh, I want to write a book. Yeah, I'm going to get around to it. But actually being able to navigate the process and see it through to completion is a completely different story. Mm -hmm. So a mentor has definitely blessed my leadership and certainly blessed my life. Okay. Thanks for that. Yes. And I do agree that mentors, both having a mentor and being a mentor are huge blessings that should not be taken lightly. And I love how you just talked about the benefits of a mentor and if you were just supporting and accountability. And I love the part that you talked about just helping you get a game plan, right? Because anything is possible if we have a game plan. And sometimes even if you're the best leader in the world, you may need someone that can help you be more effective. You're there to help others. You need someone to help you. It's an endless cycle of us all helping each other. So thanks for that. Definitely. And I think the point you made about being a mentor is important as well, just to pay it forward. I mean, there's always an opportunity to help someone get to where you are. And that's certainly important to really just continue the cycle of of continuing to help each other. That's why we're all here. (laughs) Yes, definitely. So that reminds me of the quote I say along with this podcast, which is be empowered and empower on, right? We need to get empowered and then we can help to empower others. So yes, definitely. I love that. Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Okay. So Deborah, can you offer our audience the best advice you have as a leader or have ever received from a leader and tell us how you've implemented it into your life? Sure. That's a great question. So the best advice that I've received about being a leader is to listen more than you speak. And this could be in a situation where you're maybe collaborating with someone on a project. It could be when you are asking a client for feedback. But there are so many times and opportunities when we are very, very interested in pushing our own agenda. And it's crucially important to listen and get a pulse for for what other people are are thinking and feeling and wanting in order to really tailor the level of your leadership to make sure it's fitting the needs of what others are seeking. So sometimes the easiest way to find out what someone wants is to just ask them. And it's something that's so simple, but it's not something that we are necessarily doing as leaders. And so being able to really listen more than you speak has certainly helped me in in building and growing my business and being receptive to other ideas and just being open-minded. You know, a lot of times once leaders get to a certain position in their career, they tend to think that their way is the best way or the only way to do something. But when you're collaborating and really open to listening to ideas and feedback from others, You can definitely achieve more and accomplish more in the long run. So listening more than you speak is crucial to really being a successful leader. Okay, thanks for that. I love that. I love that because listening is imperative and at times it can be a lost art, right? I deal with a few people that I often hear, I figured, I figured, like, did you ask? Like, stop trying to figure. We're not psychics. <laughs> no, let's just ask these questions that we want to know the answer to because how you think or the way you view it may be different from the way I view it and you won't know until you ask. So stop trying to figure for people. Listen to what they say. But like you said, ask. So that ask is first. Ask and then listen and you'll get the right answer as opposed to trying to figure and guesstimate and estimate. So thank you so much for that. 
Yes, absolutely. And we know that assumptions can definitely be the beginning down a rabbit hole. So asking and listening are so important to success. Yes, thank you. Okay, so you made it to the finish line. How do you feel? I feel wonderful. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome, awesome. Well, Deborah, I want to thank you again for being our guest on She Leads Podcast, Leadership Empowerment for Women of Color. But before we part, do you want to give our listeners your contact information or mention any events, products, services, and or ventures that they would benefit from knowing about? Absolutely. So the best way to learn about me, what I do as a confidence coach for women is at themodernlady.com. I recently announced my book and an ebook version. The ebook came out last month in May. And so you can learn about all of that at themodernlady.com. My book is titled Je ne sais quoi, and it is to help you unleash and unlock your feminine power to truly live your best life. So I'd love for you to check it out at my website, themodernlady.com. Awesome. Thank you. We appreciate your insight today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure, Nicole. You're welcome. I really enjoyed this interview with Devereaux, and I hope you did as well. I agree with Devereaux's viewpoint of it being frightening yet necessary to step outside of our comfort zone. When we step outside of our comfort zone, we allow ourselves to grow personally and professionally. As Devereaux mentioned, stepping outside of our comfort zone is where the magic happens. If we are looking to achieve optimal performance, then we must step outside of our comfort zone. Learning to get comfortable being uncomfortable is what successful leaders do. A quote by Neil Donald Walsh reads, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. I admire Devereaux's decision to stand up for the underdog as it shows Devereaux's care and compassion for those around her. Being a compassionate leader is so important I especially admire how Devereaux exhibited this trait growing up and ended up working in a field where she is still standing up for those that need her. Choosing to work with women who feel less than and undeserving of love is needed, and I'm glad to see Devereaux leading in this capacity. We all have power and must choose whether to use our power for good or bad. Devereaux decided to use her power for good in helping those that are vulnerable. I can relate to Devereaux being the queen of lists as I am the same. I love lists as they help me to stay organized and track my progress. Putting a check next to completed items on my list soothes my soul as I am a results-oriented individual. Lists help to make goals and aspirations tangible and within reach. Breaking down goals into tasks and using lists to plan those tasks is essential for success. List gives you direction and helps to relieve stress, further proving why lists are important for progress. If you need direction and want to relieve stress like me, then using lists is the way to go. Nicole Walker's takeaway for this week. Deborah mentioned the importance of listening more than you speak in an effort to be mindful of not pushing your own agenda. As Deborah suggested, We should tailor our leadership to what others are seeking and not be self-serving. As Devereaux stated, we must be open-minded and not overlook this simple task. I will make it my business to listen more and speak less as I aim to be more mindful of others. I do not want to be self-serving, so I know this is a must to achieve this goal. I care about helping others and realize that to successfully do so, I have to listen to the needs of others above my personal desires. A quote by Doug Larson reads, wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you'd prefer to talk. And now we have Nicole Walker's Leadership Challenge of the Week. My leadership challenge for you is to think about the one thing you can take away from this episode and adopt into your life. 
I know it's hard to absorb too much information at one time, and it's even harder to try and implement too many changes at once. When I attend a training or listen to podcasts, I aim to walk away with at least one thing that stuck out to me and one way that I can change as a result. I challenge you to do the same. If you decide to take me up on my challenge, I would love to know about your key takeaway. If you care to share, please go to the She Leads podcast discussion group on Facebook and leave your comment under the Takeaway Thursday post for season four, episode six. Don't forget to subscribe to She Leads podcast for first access to future episodes. And also like and share this episode of She Leads podcast entitled Listen More, Speak Less with Deborah Walton. Thanks. And until next time, be empowered and empower on.